How resilient is the U.S. Navy when it comes to cybersecurity? Stay tuned. Secure Ninja. I'm here at AFCA West in San Diego, and I'm speaking with Mr. Troy Johnson. He is the director of the Navy Cybersecurity Division. How are you, Mr. Johnson? Great, thank you. Excellent. We really enjoyed your talk over here, and we just wanted to follow up with you a few questions. Um, well, first of all, one of the biggest uh, conversations going on here at West is the Navy's response to the intranet uh, breach a few years back. Can you give us just an overview of what happened there? Sure. So the Navy is no different than uh, any other organization, especially a large organization. So uh, we, we suffered a pretty reasonable intrusion into our unclassified networks a, a couple of years back. And we learned, uh, we learned good lessons from that. Uh, and that's where the cyber resilience things that I just talked about uh, came from, which is we realized the importance of being able to fight through, of being agile, of being resilient. Uh, and so that's the direction that we went. Um, as it turns out, uh, we, we made uh, pretty significant adjustments in our resourcing. Uh, we're investing in better things. We're adjusting, uh, as I talked about in, uh, in my discussion just now, it's the uh, cyber is the only domain where you get to, you get to determine what the terrain looks like, right. you know, where the, where the high ground is, where the choke points are. And so uh, we're making adjustments about what our network looks like, how we use it. Uh, how we access it, all those kind of things. It, the very things that you would expect, uh, but they're based on lessons uh, that we learned from that event. We, we knew there were things that we wanted to be able to do, and so we're, uh, we're uh, busy getting to being able to do those things. Excellent. Now, cyber resilience is, uh, you know, an extension, of course, on cybersecurity. How exactly does that, what exactly does that cover beyond just basic security? Right. So cybersecurity over the last many years, if you were a uh, cybersecurity expert or what we used to call information assurance mm -hmm. a few years ago, if you were an expert a few years ago, you'd be very concerned about scanning and patching an individual computer box, uh, kind of like you do on your home computer, you know, employing certain patches, those kind of things, uh, changing, having, having, uh, having difficult passwords, you know, or even having a multi-factor authentication, like using a card and a, and a pin or something. But those are all related to protection or hardening or prevention uh, of uh, letting the badness happen on your network in the first place. Right. What resilience does is it kind of operationalizes cybersecurity by saying, you not only need to protect and harden your network, but you need to be able to detect when something anomalous happens. You need to be able to fight through and react or even pre preemptively change the nature of your network so that uh, if you see something somewhere else, for instance. And then you need to be able to recover to the way you were before the bad stuff started happening. And so res resilience is all four steps. That's not new in cybersecurity, but historically we haven't done those parts all that well. We, we be meaning kind of everybody, uh, including the, the federal government. And so, so cyber resilience is more about uh, moving beyond just protecting the stuff protecting the computers and uh, doing better detection, better reaction, better recovery. Right. What are some of the main uh, technical changes you'd like to see occur to increase cyber resilience? Well, uh, better detection means better situational awareness mm -hmm. and better reaction means better being able to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So one, you have to be censored all around your network in a way that lets you know when something anomalous happens. And that, it, and the implied in that is knowing what normal looks like right. on your network. In order to know when something anomalous happens, you have to know normal. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and that's a bigger, a bigger issue than one might think. Right. Uh, especially the more general the network is, the more general purpose the network is, the more difficult it is to establish what normal it is. Uh, if it's a control system for a, for something ashore, say a, a fuel system or something like that, that that's pretty. Uh, pretty predictable, uh, pretty predictable behavior. Whereas uh, a box that connects to the internet might be there for anything. It's supposed to be a general purpose box, which makes it very difficult to, to establish normal and therefore detect anomalous behavior. So, so we're working on that. Everybody's working on that. And then the, a lot of the fighting through is uh, the way you construct your network uh, in general. What's connected to what, uh, w whether you have redundancy, you know, whether you can not use that box and use this other box instead. So, uh, so we're working on all those things, and I think everybody is. But uh, the, 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 int the intent of the talk today was just to uh, kind of roll out the idea and say we're, we're going down this road, you know, and especially the industry reps that were in the audience, we want them to, uh, 
to move off of just protection and move toward the detection and the reaction and the recovery in what they're producing. Absolutely. Yes, it seems everyone is moving forward with cybersecurity and putting better protections in place, and the military is always at the front of that. Exactly how important at this point is cybersecurity to the Navy? Well, it's mission critical. Uh, pretty much everything we have now has some microprocessor computer component to it, mm -hmm. uh, which means all of it needs to be protected. All, and we need to be able to monitor all of it. And we need to be able to fight through all of it. Uh, many things are not connected, of course, or interact, so they're not, they're not directly vulnerable, but uh, everything that has a microprocessor is in some way vulnerable. I mean, that's a truism. Uh, so it, it turns out to be absolutely mission critical, and the Navy's taking it very seriously. We, uh, it used to be just a game for the, you know, the IT or the cyber folks, but now it's uh, something that uh, every commander is considering part of their job. Well, thank you for all of your hard work in cybersecurity for the Navy, and we appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the great cybersecurity coverage that we produce all around the world. Also, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching. Bye.